Hello gamers, welcome back to another video, where, I will be going through the final missions across the GTA series. These missions are the climax point of the game, and these missions brings out the backstabber or main villain of the respective series. From GTA 3 to GTA San Andreas, there is only one final ending, but GTA 4 and 5 have multiple endings which can be chosen by the player. I have arranged them according to the gameplay and difficulty which is completely my personal opinion. Let me know yours in the comment section. Like and subscribe for more interesting gaming related contents. Let's move into the gameplay. First is from GTA Vice City, keep your friends close is the final storyline mission in Grand Theft Auto, Vice City, which Tommy Versetti performs independently from his mansion in Starfish Island, Vice City. After failing to forcibly tax Tommy's businesses, Ferelli crime family, Don Sonny Ferelli is heading to Vice City from Liberty City, in order to deal with Tommy in person and reclaim his cut and quad. Tommy, informed of Sonny's impending visit by, Ken and Lance, sets aside $3 million of counterfeit cash in an attempt to placate Sonny. Sonny arrives at Tommy's mansion along with several Ferelli family members. As Tommy prepares to give Sonny the counterfeit cash, Lance openly betrays Tommy, citing business as his motivation. Sonny confronts Tommy over his attempt to placate him with counterfeit cash. Tommy, still reeling from Lance's betrayal, replies that he just wanted to piss Sonny off before he kills him. This sparks a large-scale gunfight within the mansion. Lance flees to the mansion roof, while Tommy defends his safe from numerous Ferelli family members attempting to take back Tommy's cash. After killing several members, Tommy heads to the roof where he confronts and kills Lance. After killing Lance, Tommy heads back to the mansion's foyer, where Sonny confirms Tommy's suspicion that the incident 15 years earlier which resulted in Tommy being sent to prison for killing 11 men, after being sent to kill only one, was indeed an ambush orchestrated by Sonny. Now after his revenge, Tommy kills Sonny's guards before finally killing Sonny. After the shootout, Ken reappears and asks Tommy what happened, with Tommy explaining that he had a disagreement with a business associate in Quad. Tommy laments Lance's betrayal, before telling Ken that they won't be having any more trouble from up north in Quad. As Tommy announces that he is in charge, he ends the mission by telling Ken that this could be the beginning of a beautiful business relationship in Quad. Second is from GTA 3. The exchange is the final storyline mission in Grand Theft Auto 3. It is given to the protagonist, Claude, by Colombian cartel leader, ex-girlfriend, and main antagonist Catalina from the cartel mansion in Cedar Grove, Shoreside Vale, Liberty City. Catalina recently kidnapped Maria Latore. She now wants Claude to bring $500,000 to the cartel mansion in Cedar Grove in exchange for not having Maria killed. Claude arrives at the mansion's gate and hands over the money to a cartel member, having all his weapons taken away before being brought in to meet Catalina. Catalina chastises Claude for trusting her and walks off with the money, but not before ordering her men to kill Claude. Claude is put under gunpoint by a cartel member, but quickly escapes by punching him and taking the pistol he dropped. Claude swiftly takes down the remaining cartel members before leaving the mansion, only to find a helicopter hovering past him which has Catalina and Maria aboard. Claude follows the helicopter all the way to the base of Cochrane Dam, killing groups of heavily armed cartel members that gets in his way. With Claude closing into the helicopter, Catalina drops off Maria and a couple of her guards at the loading bay before re-entering her helicopter. Catalina's chopper fires missiles at the ground while Claude gets to Maria and kills the remaining cartel men. Claude picks up a nearby rocket launcher to shoot down Catalina's chopper. After successfully hitting the helicopter, it spins out of control before crashing against the dam, killing Catalina. Afterwards, Claude and Maria walk together as they cross over to the other side of the dam. While the credits are rolling on the screen Maria can be heard talking right before a mysterious gunshot, after which, she remains silent and is no longer heard. The news also reports the crime scene with witness Clive Denver. Next up is the two alternative endings from GTA 5. The missions, something sensible for killing Trevor and the times come for killing Michael are both of same difficulty and is the easiest way to end GTA 5. Devin Weston shows up at Franklin's house and tells Franklin to kill Michael DeSanta, due to him also being a liability, for Molly's death and his failure to kill his family. Devin gives Franklin three choices, which appear on his phone as follows. Kill Trevor, A, kill Michael, B, or death wish, C. Choosing choice A commences this mission and has Franklin call Trevor to meet him at the oil field off Elboro Heights. On the way there, Franklin calls Michael, informs him of the situation, and asks if he can help. Michael is hesitant, saying that it sounds like, Franklin's, thing, but says he will see what he can do. At Elboro Heights, Trevor laments how Michael had been backstabbing towards him and how he and Franklin are friends, only to see Franklin turn a gun towards him saying that he was the crazy one, not Michael or Franklin and he would most likely end up getting all three of them killed. Baffled, 
Trevor remarks on how he has done nothing but be truthful to Franklin. Franklin concedes the point, but does not let down the gun, saying that the truth is not what he is interested in. Betrayed again, Trevor attempts to escape in his truck, driving around the city and eventually the oil fields, with Franklin chasing him. Michael calls Franklin telling him that he's close, then arrives in a stolen Premier and rams into Trevor's truck, which causes Trevor to crash into a gas tanker, rupturing it and covering Trevor in gas. Subdued, Trevor crawls out the truck and remarks how he thought he was with one Judas, but he is in fact surrounded by them. With nowhere to go and with gasoline spilling from the tanker and pooling around him, he resigns himself to his fate and Franklin then shoots the gas, setting Trevor ablaze. Trevor is burnt to death by the flames and the entire tank explodes. If Franklin hesitates, Michael will shoot the gas instead. With Trevor out of their way, Michael and Franklin leave the fields reflecting over how Trevor's violent behavior led to his demise. Franklin sarcastically thanks Michael for the education, which Michael counters by telling him to survive, and everything else is bullshit. The two head their separate ways as the credits roll in with a view of the city. Similar to the previous mission Franklin has three options, which appear on his phone as follows, kill Trevor, A, kill Michael, B, or death wish, C. Choosing choice B commences this mission and has Franklin call Michael to talk somewhere quiet and quiet. Franklin also calls Trevor to see if he can help him kill Michael, but Trevor refuses to help, furious at Franklin's intent to betray Michael and declaring that he has had enough traitors in his life. Before hanging up, he tells Franklin that he and Michael deserve each other and quiet. Franklin meets Michael in a field of satellite dishes off Route 68 outside of Los Santos, where Michael reflects that through their partnership, Michael has developed a stronger bond with his family and he's in his dream job, and he has also announced through a phone call that Tracy made it into college. Franklin then attempts to ease his choice in by reflecting upon their experiences and telling him that he likes him and he risked everything for him. But Michael quickly realizes he is sent to kill him and gets into his car with Franklin shooting at him. Beginning a chase along the railway lines, the chase leads into the Palmer Taylor power station, where Franklin chases Michael up the scaffolding to one of the chimney walkways after several shootouts. Michael expresses his disappointment towards his choice, claiming that Franklin was like a son to him and quiet. They both then begin a small scuffle, with Michael showing anger and sadness at his decision and reflects on how he was the only decent person to him, while Franklin counters it by saying he was only ever Michael's bitch and quiet. Shortly after, Franklin pushes Michael back, causing him to fall over the rail and is only held by Franklin. Franklin then starts to regret his decisions, but Michael objects and wishes he killed him before. Franklin can either pull Michael up or drop him to his death. However, if he decides to pull Michael up, Michael will headbutt Franklin forcing him to lose his grip. Either way, Michael falls to his death, dying instantly once he hits the ground. Afterwards, Franklin calls Lamar but ends up with his voicemail, regretting the decision he just made by the way he quotes Michael. Now resigned to the fact that he will never be more than a hustler and is back where he started at the beginning of the game, Franklin walks away from the power station as the credits begin rolling. Next is the alternative endings from GTA 4. In the entire series only Nico Bellic doesn't get a good ending. Either his cousin dies or his girlfriend dies. Maybe this might be the reason why Rockstar brought in a third ending in GTA 5. A Revengers tragedy is the final storyline mission in Grand Theft Auto 4, if the deal ending was chosen. After the tragedy with Roman at the church on his wedding day, Nico will wake up in the Boeing safe house. Back in the clothes he got off of the boat with, Nico will be out for revenge on this. Little Jacob will call Nico to inform him that he's waiting for him in a car on Asahara Road in Alderney, and regardless of where you are at the current time, you should head there once you're prepared to begin this final mission. When you arrive, little Jacob will tell Nico the rest of the plan, how Pegorino and Dimitri are in cahoots with one another, and that to find him, we need to tail one of Pegorino's guys back to his place. And just like that, you're on your way. After an extended car chase and dialogue between Nico and Jacob, the two eventually lead them to an abandoned casino in the north of Alderney, with Nico tells Jacob not to join the fight. Nico then fights his way into the casino, until he finds Pegorino and Dimitri. When you run in on the two men, Dimitri has a pistol to Jimmy's head, and before your very eyes, he does him in. There's no time to worry about that, however, Jimmy was a rat, anyway. Dimitri runs off, Nico runs up the stairs after him. Nico fights some of Dimitri's man while he plans to escape on his helicopter. Dimitri will make a getaway on his helicopter, and while Nico grabs on momentarily, he's shortly thereafter kicked into the water below. Thankfully, he lands not on top of but rather next to a speedboat that he can pull himself into in order to give chase. Nico starts chasing Dimitri where Nico is being targeted with RPGs and rocket launchers from the helicopter. Jacob arrive in an annihilator. Nico then jumps onto it, 
Nico takes over the helicopter and starts to follow Dimitri. Eventually both the helicopters are damaged by the shootings and land, on Happiness Island, in between Algonquin and Alderney. From there Nico follows Dimitri and shooting Dimitri will attract cops. Nico meets Dimitri in the backside of the statue and kills Dimitri and later is joined by little Jacob ending the story. Out of commission is the final storyline mission in Grand Theft Auto 4, if the revenge ending is chosen. After Roman and Mallory's wedding and the revenge ending, Nico, who has been mourning the death of Kate, receives a phone call from little Jacob telling him he and Roman found some of Jimmy Pegorino's mobsters in a building in Koresh Square in Alderney. Afterwards, the mission automatically starts as Nico goes to the two who are waiting in Akanyashanti, and they begin to pursue the mobsters to Jimmy Pegorino. After an extended car chase and dialogue between the three about why Nico is doing this, the two eventually lead them to an abandoned casino in the north of Alder, with Nico telling Roman and Jacob not to join the fight and they do so. Nico then fights his way into the casino, until he finds Pegorino. Pegorino states that if he would have worked for him things would be better, and Kate's death was Nico's fault. He then runs away and boards a boat on a jetty after letting loose more of his guards which are killed. He then gives chase by using a dirt bike and staying on the shore. After a short while, Roman and Jacob arrive in an annihilator. Nico then jumps onto it by means of a ram, and Roman pulls him in the helicopter. Once aboard, Nico takes over the controls, as Jacob claims that he's bad at flying, and flies over Pegorino's boat with Jacob shooting it. The boat catches fire but due to a rocket launcher shot so does the annihilator. Jimmy manages to escape from the boat at Happiness Island and run under the Statue of Happiness while Nico safely lands the burning helicopter and goes after Pegorino. Nico then engages in a gun battle with Pegorino, mortally wounding him in the process. A cutscene then shows Nico confronting Pegorino as he slowly bleeds to death. Nico tells him about knowing people in the commission and that says they thought he, Pegorino, was a fat fucking joke. Nico turns his back on Pegorino. As he raises his gun to shoot Nico from behind, Nico quickly turns back and shoots Pegorino in the head, killing him. Roman and Jacob then show up and comfort Nico. Roman explains that now that their enemies are beaten, they can start making money freely and live peacefully. Even though Nico agrees, he is still grieving due to Kate's death. Nico, Roman and Jacob then leave Pegorino's body at the foot of the Statue of Happiness as the camera pans out to show the Liberty City skyline at sunset. Next is from GTA San Andreas. End of the line is the final storyline mission in Grand Theft Auto. San Andreas given to protagonist Carl Johnson by his brother and leader of the Grove Street families, Sean, from his home in Grove Street, Ganton, Los Santos, San Andreas. Carl and Sweet have managed to find out where their former friend, Big Smoke, is hiding. They drive over to Smoke's hideout in East Los Santos while avoiding rioters. Upon arriving, they see that Smoke's cracked palace has heavy security and there's no way to enter the place except for breaking through the wall. Carl convinces Sweet to allow him to go by himself, saying that Smoke and Tenpenny played him, and also wanted to atone for letting their brother, Brian, die five years prior. Carl finds a SWAT tank nearby and steals it while being attacked by SWAT officers and Ballas gang members. He successfully smashes the wall and enters the crack palace. Upon entering, Carl makes his way through three floors while killing Ballas, Vagos, San Firo Rifa, and Russian Mafia gang members, as well as workers, whom all carry M4S, AK-47s, combat shotguns, and MP5s amongst other strong weapons. Carl manages to find Big Smoke, who claims that he doesn't feel any regrets over betraying the Grove Street families, and takes out a gun ready to battle Carl. During a shootout, Carl manages to kill Smoke, and after a brief conversation questioning Smoke's decision, he says he had no choice and saw the opportunity for power and money before dying. With his dying breath, Smoke claims that everyone will remember his name, ensuring his legacy. As soon as he dies, Carl sadly laments Smoke's end, muttering damn, man, what a waste. Frank Tenpenny, who had been watching the whole thing, arrives and orders Carl to put all of Smoke's money in his bag. Tenpenny threatens Carl with a combat shotgun, and sarcastically congratulates Carl on killing Eddie Pulaski and, now, Big Smoke. Tenpenny then states his next move, 
boarding a plane to flee from Los Santos to avoid the riders. As Tenpenny prepares to kill Carl, Carl manages to distract Tenpenny by shouting Sweet's name, and as Tenpenny quickly turns around, Carl manages to dive out of the way as Tenpenny quickly brings his attention back to Carl and shoots at him, albeit missing, and flees from the room. After that, Tenpenny runs to the second floor and sets the whole building on fire by shooting a generator, causing it to explode. Carl leaves the crack palace the same way he came in, killing anyone in his way. After successfully escaping, Tenpenny attempts to drive away in his fire truck, but Sweet jumps on his greenwood and then leaps at the ladder on the back of the truck, and hangs on from it. Carl enters a parked Feltzer and starts to chase Tenpenny. During a long chase throughout Los Santos with Bagos and Balas on the road throwing Molotovs, and the police chasing the trio, a police officer in the truck gets out and starts stomping on Sweet's fingers. Carl gets the Feltzer under the ladder and Sweet drops onto the hood and then climbs over into the passenger seat. On Carl's order, Sweet then takes control of the car with Carl acting as the shooter with his micro SMG. The chase continues throughout the city with Carl destroying police cars, as well as Vagos rioters chasing them in tornadoes and on bikes. The chase comes to an end on the bridge over Ganton where Tenpenny crashes his truck off the bridge. Tenpenny climbs out of the fire truck and deliriously shouts about how he had kept the neighborhood clean with his deeds and would do it all again before dying in the middle of Grove Street, where the story began and now where it ends. Having witnessed this, Carl, Caesar, Sweet, and Kendall walk towards Tenpenny, and Carl prepares to shoot Tenpenny with a desert eagle to make sure it's over and quiet. Sweet lowers Carl's gun however, instead deciding that Tenpenny killed himself in a traffic accident. No one to blame, possibly so that nobody can link any of them or Grove Street families to Tenpenny's demise. The truth then appears, congratulating Carl for beating the system, a feat which truth claims would take ages for himself to achieve. Carl informs the others about Big Smoke's death, with Kendall remarking about how Smoke was only out for himself, a statement that the truth agrees with, referring to it as the surest path to hell, that are 40 pounds of mescaline and quad. As Truth, Sweet, Caesar, and Kendall walk away, Carl checks Tenpenny's corpse, before swiftly kicking it and mocking by mimicking Tenpenny's usual greetings towards him with, see you around, officer and quad. With that, the group reconvene inside the Johnson house to talk about their future, with Kendall discussing their ventures in San Firo and Las Venturas, remarking on how shit never ends in quad. Ken Rosenberg, Mad Dog, Kent Paul and McCurr enter the house, causing the rather paranoid group to ready their guns, then lower them upon seeing who it is. Mad Dog announces his first gold record, and they all celebrate their success, and McCurr gleefully announces that he will be getting breast implants before Carl heads out of the house fit and to hit the block. Last and the most interesting ending is the third option in GTA 5. The third way is the final storyline mission and canon ending of Grand Theft Auto 5. The mission is triggered if the player has Franklin choose option C, Death Wish. Choosing choice C leads to this mission and as Franklin meet Lester at his place after calling him. Franklin tells him how Haynes wants Trevor killed and Weston wants Michael killed. They, at first, seem to not have any hope of thinking of a way where both Trevor and Michael survive. But after brainstorming, Lester comes up with a plan to avoid having to kill either of them. The plan is to use their knowledge of Haynes and Weston's personalities and motivations in order to lead the Fib and Merriweather into a trap at the foundry under the pretense of melting down the gold there from the Union Depository heist. Franklin picks up Lamar Davis at his home and they go to the foundry, with Lamar having newfound respect for Franklin for doing this for both Trevor and Michael rather than himself. Lamar waits outside and keeps a lookout while Franklin goes inside to find Michael and Trevor arguing and about to kill each other. Michael with a heavy sniper and Trevor with a combat MG but Franklin threatens to kill them off if they don't set their egos aside in order to deal with the problem at hand. Lamar then warns Franklin about the FIB agents approaching fast towards the foundry and their location, and Michael, Trevor, and Franklin work together to kill all of the FIB agents and Merriweather mercenaries sent against them in one swift ambush. Various stages of the ensuing battle require that the player provide backup to certain characters. First, Lamar will radio that he is being overrun and needs help. 
Franklin must get out to the foundry entrance where he dropped off Lamar, and kill the FIB agents attacking Lamar before he is wasted. Then Michael, after not receiving a response from Trevor, must go over to where Trevor was positioned to check on him before being wasted, causing the mission to fail. Because Franklin says that he has to stay with Lamar, Michael leaves his sniping position and fights his way to reach Trevor who gets back up. Then, Michael and Trevor must fight their way out of the foundry and help Franklin kill off any remaining FIB and Meriwether forces in the area. Finally, after all of the agents and mercenaries are killed, the trio take a moment to catch their breaths. Then Franklin brings up the fact that they still have work to do, namely picking off friends who either betrayed or tried to kill the trio in the past. He then calls Lester for their whereabouts. Michael sets out to kill Stretch as revenge for betraying Franklin and Lamar, cheating them on two drug deals, and trying to have the pair killed by the Ballas and Hood Safari, the Long Stretch, and Lamar down. Trevor sets out to kill Haynes as revenge for forcing the group to pull off several dangerous jobs on his behalf only to betray Michael and Dave and trying to have them killed. Trevor also declares that he has wanted to kill Haynes since the moment he met him. With Trevor and Michael having chosen their targets, Franklin is left to kill Chang as revenge for ambushing Trevor and Michael, kidnapping and torturing Michael, and trying to have Trevor killed as revenge against killing the Emils. Once the above targets are eliminated, Trevor goes to Devin Weston's mansion to kidnap him. This is revenge on Weston for cheating Trevor, Franklin, Lamar, and Michael. Trevor must make his way through a squad of eight Meriwether guards patrolling the house to get to Weston. He can either take a subtle approach by sneaking around and knocking out the guards, or he can take a direct route and attack the guards head on. After Trevor makes his way through the Meriwether security forces, he finds Weston hiding in a trunk near the pool. Trevor punches and knocks him unconscious, and carries him to his tornado in the driveway. Trevor throws Weston in the trunk, shuts it, and drives the car to meet up with Franklin and Michael. Trevor arrives at the cliff and informs Weston that they have enough time left for some one-on-one -on -one time and qua. Franklin taunts the billionaire about his choice of ending. Michael taunts Weston about the two great evils of American capitalism that he has performed, betraying everyone he has ever worked with, including them, all the major antagonists, Don Percival, and his own company because, in Michael's words, Weston thought he was big enough and bad enough to not play by the rules, and walk offshore alone as a free man. Michael states that neither he, Franklin or Trevor would ever do such a thing, and declares that Weston keep, his, problems the fuck out of America. Michael, Trevor and Franklin mockingly bid Weston farewell and thank him for all of his advice before Michael closes the trunk. The three protagonists push the tornado with Weston in the trunk off a cliff and into the ocean below. The car then explodes shortly after impact with the shallow seabed, destroying both Weston and the car. Franklin backs away from the two and towards his bike, telling them that they terrify him of middle age, which Michael jokingly tells him he should be afraid of. Michael walks back towards his car, but not before announcing his official retirement to Trevor, declaring he is getting too old for this nonsense. Franklin and Michael drive off as Trevor looks on, before he awkwardly walks off screen as the credits roll. Let me know which is your favorite ending mission in the comment section. Like and subscribe for more gaming related contents. Thanks for watching.